acknowledge the OCLC Research Library Partnership, which both underwrites and inspires our work. Attendees of this webinar are from the OCLC RLP, and we want to thank you for your continued support and input into our work. These are both crucial to our success. We are also um, uh, pleased to welcome today our uh, presenters, um, Shane Huddleston and Jeff Baxter. Just going to switch over here. Uh, to their slides, and I am going to fumble around with WebEx here and hand things over to Jeff to kick us off. So take it away, Jeff. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you, Marilee, and thanks, everyone, who's uh, joining us today. Uh, again, my name is Jeff Mixter. I'm a, a software engineer in uh, OCLC Research, and today um, I'm joined with my colleague, Shane Huddleston, and we'll be talking about uh, IIIF, uh, and specifically um, transitioning from prototype to uh, production in terms of our support and use of IIIF here at OCLC. So before uh, we dive into too much detail, I thought it'd be helpful to give a quick overview of what IIIF is uh, for those who are unfamiliar or, or, or who had just heard it but didn't know much about it. Um, so IIIF, uh, as you would imagine, is an acronym that stands for the International Image Inter Interoperability Framework, excuse me. Um, it's uh, it's um, a bit incorrect in that uh, the standard actually supports more than images. Um, it can also support uh, audio as well as video, um, but initially, initially it was designed just for images and hence the name and uh, the acronym. Um, so, so more what, what is IIIF? Um, it is uh, an emerging web standard for sharing information about uh, images and, as I mentioned, uh, or other media. Um, and, and what is it for? Um, it, as a standard, um, helps simplify and standardize the way uh, in which we ask for and consume media data. So as opposed to having proprietary formats, locks and silos, uh, the goal of IIIF is to sort of help standardize at least the way um, the structural content of images and, and other media are, are compiled and, and uh, shared across the web. So uh, just to show a quick example, a quick few examples of, of what IIIF can do uh, in action. Um, but it's a key features uh, that's it's really popular amongst IIIF implementers is this idea of deep zoom. Uh, so in this image in the upper right hand corner, um, you can see sort of a large canvas. This is a very, very large painting. Um, and what you see sort of um, covering the rest of the slide here is a very, very narrow zoomed in um, caption or portion of this canvas. Um, so deep zoom is sort of um, built into IIIF as a foundational component of the APIs. Um, so it allows for very dynamic, quick, um, and very high fidelity deep zooming into images, which is really helpful when you're working with um, very large images or um, or manuscripts that have very special or small illuminations in them and things like that. Another component of the IIIF APIs is the ability to do annotations on images. Um, so here's an annotation service where a user um, or, or a bot, if you will, a machine can crop out sections of um, an image. Here it happens to be, it looks like a journal or something like that. Um, and actually then add uh, machine consumable, readable, and most importantly, indexable uh, text to the images. So these annotations can in turn be indexed and discovered and searched across and then also shared with this image as it's um, sent across the web between organizations. And finally, um, sort of combining uh, the, the annotation slide I previously showed, uh, IIIF also supports um, aggregation by searching. Um, so here, uh, a user has done a search for elephants, uh, as well as um, sort of all these other variant forms of the word. Um, and what's happening is this, uh, this particular system is going off and finding all of the um, uh, matching IIIF images within their index and pulling them all together for the user uh, to search across. 
So uh, this can be very powerful if you have um, a large um, set of images that are in various collections that you might want to do keyword searching across for, for research or just general discovery. So um, as I mentioned that um, earlier, um, IIIF is really based on, um, I know that dreaded word APIs, um, which, which stand for Application Programming Interfaces. Um, I'm not going to get into the technical mumbo jumbo of them, but um, IIIF is sort of built on four, four primary APIs, um, and then there's one in development. So these, uh, the four primary ones are the uh, image API, which is basically used uh, to describe or to spec how to ask for images. So asking for sections of images or different variants, so different types of images, whether it be JPEG or uh, PNG or TIFF. Um, and the image API also allows for things like rotation, um, that zoom, that deep zooming um, I showed earlier is taken care of in the, in the image API. So the image API is really um, uh, designed for requesting the image and any variants of the image that the, that the server supports. Um, the presentation API is more of a, a structural sort of binding API. So um, for, for example, if you have a manuscript that has uh, 400 pages, um, each of those pages might be an individual image. And within the context of the manuscript, it's very important to make sure that those images are in the correct order. So page one um, come, becomes before page two, which is followed by page three, et cetera, et cetera. And the presentation API is a way for combining these all together um, and also for um, connecting annotations to individual images. So if you have um, annotations for page one, um, the presentation API allows you to appropriately hook up and connect the annotations that someone has created with the appropriate page that they're associated with. The, uh, the third API is the search API. Um, as the name implies, it's used for searching. Um, and that's really about all it does. Um, and then the final API is authentication. Um, again, as the name implies, it's used for authentication. Um, what's important about this API is that it is not a authentication service. Um, rather, it is just a very high level sort of abstraction layer that is designed to interface and work with existing authentication mechanisms that organizations have in place, um, but is really designed for routing a user who tries to get to a IIIF resource to the appropriate authentication services. Um, so you don't just get a blank page or an error page. You can actually be prompted to log in or um, that you just are not authorized to access this image or, or something like that. And then um, this sort of in development API is called the Discovery API. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later, but it's designed to help facilitate um, the discovery of IIIF resources across the web. So um, the current status of, of IIIF, um, it is a, uh, it recently it is formed into a consortium um, that uh, organizations can join. Um, OCLC is, is a member of the IIIF consortium along with uh, 53 other organizations. Um, these are rough numbers, but um, it's been estimated that there's approximately somewhere in the realm of 1 billion images um, that use IIIF across uh, sort of the, the LAM, libraries, archives, and museums um, space. And Content DM currently supports the presentation and image APIs. Um, and just to give uh, some breakdown on those, um, there's approximately four, 14 and a half million presentation uh, manifests. These are these sort of, um, uh, these documents that bind together a bunch of images into a, a coherent presentation for the user. Um, and with, uh, across those 14 and a half million presentation manifests, there are approximately 30 million uh, content DM images. So one thing to note, um, and I don't want to dwell on this too much because uh, this is not what this presentation is about, 
Um, but one thing that is important about IIIF is it is linked data. And I think it's important to note that this is um, OCLC's first uh, productionized, supported, and used linked data service. Um, so there's this idea of um, sort of a five-star linked data um, scale. Um, this was developed by Tim Berners-Lee uh, back in the early 2000s, so sort of how to, to rank um, how useful uh, your linked data is. Um, and while AAAF does not encompass all five stars, it does not have a five-star rating, um, it certainly um, achieves four stars. Um, and Rob Sanderson, uh, a semantic architect at the, at the Getty, uh, came up with this phrase I think is, is really helpful and useful um, that you know, linked open data is great, uh, but it's only really useful if it's linked open usable data. And uh, IIIF um, has strived to be uh, not only linked data, not only open, but most importantly, usable from not only a um, production standpoint, but also from how end users can interact with and use the data. So uh, at this point, I'm gonna turn uh, things over to my colleague Shane to talk about IIIF and how it's used here at uh, OCLC. Hi folks, this is Shane Huddleston. I'm the uh, product manager for Content DM. And as Jeff said, I just want to uh, kind of summarize how IIIF has impacted services at, at OCLC, in particular Content DM, uh, but uh, kind of the, the ways that IIIF has, has uh, leveraged um, some of the, the efforts that we've been pursuing internally. So today, um, all Content DM repositories support IIIF. Um, and we've integrated a tri IIIF viewer into WorldCat Discovery as well. Um, as Jeff mentioned, we've, there are about 30 million objects across the four OCLC data centers that are presented via IIIF standards. Um, we support the Image API uh, and the Open Sea Dragon viewer, which is an open source image deep zoom viewer, is uh, integrated into ContaDM's end user interface. Um, and then, of course, the presentation API, um, you need that to actually know what these records are, what these objects are, uh, how they're constructed. So that's also supported across all ContaDM instances. Um, it's very interesting to sort of think about how, so IIIF is an open standard. You can make, you can make image viewers and uh, do deep zooming without IIIF. You know, certainly that's been done for a long time. Um, and it's interesting how IIIF has, has uh, kind of, I feel like it's sort of changed the, changed the game. It's changed the way uh, any repository owner is interacting with other uh, repositories on the web. Um, here's a, an image taken from, from a, a current ContaDM user. Uh, this sort of shows a, a collaboration going on uh, as a family gathering, I presume. The evolution of IIIF at OCLC uh, really started out of a collaboration with sort of the, the research division of OCLC and the you know, software development, service development side of OCLC and global technology. Um, you know, as you might imagine, IIIF's specifications are complex. They're very detailed. They're extremely high quality. Um, the, there's a lot of highly technical data modeling and thinking that had to go into the IIIF API specifications. And so they're, they're non-trivial to implement. So, um, you know, we, thankfully, we're, we're able to leverage the experience and knowledge of OCLC Research Division to kind of uh, create an initial functional prototype of these um, APIs to sort of model how existing data, existing data in Content DM, which has a, its own different data model, how those could be transformed and translated into the IIIF standards. Um, and so that was a really, a really uh, productive uh, kind of process. It made it 
uh, made it happen uh, much more easily, I, I think. And then, of course, we sort of kind of toss it over the wall to the to the uh, technologists to productionize it, scale it up, make sure we can handle support 30 million uh, records and all this uh, traffic and requests that you would expect on top of that. So the technology division kind of took it from there and made sure it was street legal and, and deployed it. Um, and it's been really nice to see kind of the ongoing uh, interactions. You know, we, we're pursuing additional IIIF projects and there's a really nice um, collaborative effort going back and forth because you have to kind of start at this theoretical level uh, to sort of understand the specs, understand the implications of those specs, and then you get down to kind of the, the boring details of just how do we how do we implement it and run it in our data centers. Um, so it's a, a really good collaborative process there. Um, this here's another image. This is uh, some students in a chemistry lab. Uh, you know, basically what they're doing here is taking taking chemicals, reagents, and mixing them together to make something new and uh, interesting. So here's my $5 word. Um, one thing I've really observed about the IIIF community and this sort of uh, set of open standards and the various applications that, uh, that are being developed is the existence, the mere existence of these open standards has catalyzed a whole lot of other activity. So Jeff showed some things at the very beginning some uh, visual sort of uh, manifestations of IIIF. Um, and we've seen that as soon as, as soon as you have support for these standards, good things happen. Um, so examples include the integration of the Mirador viewer. If uh, folks are familiar with that, Mirador kind of came out of the sort of manuscripts world. It's a, kind of a specialized viewer uh, that gives you, gives a lot of nice end user functions for working with historic manuscripts. Um, and the Harry Ransom Center and the Huntington Library have both integrated the Mirador viewer into their repositories because it's easy to do due to the existence of, of the IIIF APIs. Um, a, a very different type of application is a transcription project. This was a, a, a crowdsourced transcription service that was uh, created by the Alabama Department of Archives and History. They have uh, hundreds of uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of World War I service cards that had a lot of information about, um, you know, demographic information about uh, enrollees in, in World War I. And they worked with, uh, from the page, to build a crowdsourced transcription uh, end user interface. And they ended up getting all of these service cards transcribed through volunteer efforts. The key point here was from the page, this uh, you know, service provider was able to connect their service to ContentDM in this case, Alabama's uh, repository, because IIIF existed. They, had, they already had the, the, the pieces they needed to, to link up uh, through the mechanism of IIIF APIs. So it really allowed that, uh, sort of provided some grace to allow that to happen. And then, as I mentioned uh, above, uh, inside OCLC, once we knew we had IIIF support available and predictable, we were able to take a IIIF viewer and drop it right into the current WorldCat Discovery interface. So if you are a WorldCat Discovery user today, you can uh, view images, high resolution, deep zoomable images directly from Discovery's results page without having to click out, click out to the home, your home repository. So it's a nice, it's a really nice convenience uh, for anyone who's browsing a set of digital uh, records in, in discovery. Um, and again, that was, that was relatively speaking e easy. You know, developers don't like it when you say that word, uh, but you know, it was relatively simple to implement that simply because IIIF uh, standards existed and were supported. Um, the other thing that's uh, interesting about IIIF is, is kind of just this, uh, there's just a high level of enthusiasm. So it's a really vibrant community. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of experimentation. A lot of really innovative work is being pursued. 
Um, and, you know, it's interesting because it kind of starts from a real simple set of APIs, you know, some highly technical lists of specifications, but the applications that are, are being created from uh, IIIF are really incredible. And it's uh, some of the most cutting edge work, I think, that's happening in uh, sort of the digital repository realm. Um, some kind of tangible impacts that we've noticed at OCLC are that um, we had IIIF as a major focus of a, of a users group meeting that we had this summer. Uh, it, it filled right up. We had, we basically maxed out uh, at, at the attendance at that um, event. I think IIIF definitely played into that uh, significantly. And that's sort of proved out by the fact that basically everyone who came signed up for a, a workshop that was focused on how to implement an example implementation using IIIF within your repository. Um, I think on, on sort of the uh, other, other side of things, within the IIIF community, there's uh, been some just appreciation that OCLC is, is a part of that community, that we're uh, giving tangible support to the standards. Um, you know, we, we also, there's a lot of data in our data centers, so bringing 30 million records from a diverse set of uh, sources is uh, great. You know, IIIF is all about interoperability, sharing open data across the web and making it available. And so uh, it's been uh, really nice to see, uh, see that we can bring all that data into, the, into that realm. Um, and I think just personally, I felt like uh, ContaDM is kind of being seen in a, in a new light uh, through this mechanism of embracing open standards and supporting an open community. Um, another sort of facet of our interactions with IIIF is, is the much more concrete uh, role we're playing. So we are officially a member of the IIIF consortium. Uh, staff, and that includes Jeff and I uh, on this uh, webinar are active contributors in the IIIF working groups. So IIIF is successful precisely because it has an engaged community. Uh, that is why it is working. Uh, and there's a lot of really talented individuals who are involved and uh, making really uh, meaningful contributions uh, to, to the, these efforts. Uh, so we're trying to do our part and contribute as well. Um, OCLC Research, and Jeff is going to talk about this a little bit more in a, in a minute or two here, uh, has been doing some prototyping work for the, the IIIF Discovery API. So Jeff and others in OCLC Research did some prototyping to contribute to ContentDM's support for IIIF, while well, a similar pr principle is being applied to the evolution, the sort of advancement of IIIF's own APIs. So we have a lot of data. We have uh, the ability to sort of scale up and see how what it looks like to productionize some of these APIs as they're being developed, so we can offer feedback back to um, to the working groups and the, the technical review committees about you know changes that might be needed to accommodate you know tens of millions of records or the like. So that's a, another thing that we're really actively involved in, um, and then sort of just the you know, spreading the word. We're, uh, we're huge fans of IIIF and we're really trying to, to present the value proposition and, and uh, help others to understand why it's worth pursuing and all the things you can do uh, with IIIF. And at that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Jeff to talk uh, in some more detail about where we're going uh, in the future and a uh, little, little more detail on some of his work. All right, so uh, so Shane just uh, went over sort of the sort of IIIF in production. So what I'm going to wrap up with is uh, moving forward, uh, what are OCLC's uh, current uh, plan IIIF work, um, and more specifically, um, what what is OCLC research planning on doing uh, with IIIF over the next year or so. Um, so um, I guess speaking on behalf of Shane, um, from a content DM or an OCLC production standpoint, uh, we are um, committed to um, continuing to enhance and update our IIIF API support. 
Um, we, uh, from research, are going to be contributing on uh, continuing um, ongoing uh, discovery API research. Um, across OCLC, as Shane mentioned a few slides back, uh, we are uh, planning to continue to promote uh, IIIF through webinars and workshops, um, as well as attending various IIIF conferences um, around, around the country. Um, and also continue to support user customization and integration uh, for IIIF-based applications in Content DM. So Shane mentioned um, a couple of these viewers like Mirador, um, there's a couple of other viewers that specialize on different types of, or presenting different types of IIIF materials. Um, and uh, Content DM is very nice in that it's easily customizable. Um, so, um, we are currently working on being able to integrate uh, Mirador as a sort of a, a, a cookbook recipe for integrating in your content DM sites. Um, but there's also um, other various IIIF based applications that we'd like to um, expand support for and actually provide recipes or cookbooks, if you will, to DM users on how to easily integrate them if they're interested in doing so. So um, Shane might have mentioned, I think mentioned this earlier, um, there are, are work, working groups within IIIF um, that uh, Shane and I, um, as well as a few other folks um, in OCS Research are uh, members of. Um, there are currently nine uh, IIIF community working groups. Um, and these working groups are divided into sort of two, uh, two categories. Um, the, the first of which is, is truly a community group um, sort of or in the, these would be things like the, the newspapers community group or the 3D community group. And these groups sort of coalesce around um, domains of expertise um, and don't directly influence the, the API development, but rather produce sort of best practices for specific community groups to um, describe their newspapers or how to um, produce annotations for manuscripts, or how what what standards should you be using in producing 3D materials to make it work well with the IIIF. So these are really more um, the sort of traditional sense of community groups in that they're just folks coming together to um, try to build a consensus view on how to do things within the IIIF community or within the IIIF realm. Um, the second group is more um, sort of hands-on working on the technical specifications. So these are technical working groups. Um, we mentioned the discovery working group earlier. Um, there is also just a generic API technical working group. Um, and these are sort of more the, the techie folks that are really sort of, um, sort of sit down and hammer out advancements to the API, refinements, improvements, updates. Um, and in the case of the discovery API, actually develop a brand new spec to be integrated into uh, IIIF in the, in the coming year or so. So um, I'm going to talk briefly um, about the discovery working group uh, because I am a, a member of it. Um, I mentioned earlier that it's, um, it's focused on um, discovery, uh, as the name implies. And importantly, it's focused on both intra and inter-domain discoverability. So um, both um, discovery by organizations that understand IIIF and are interested in IIIF, um, but also discoverability from a sort of more broad search engine type of basis. So the Googles of the world or the Bings or Yahoo, you know, is there a way that we can help make our organization's information um, encoded using IIIF? more discoverable and usable by the, the broader the broader web. Um, and those are those are both uh, monumental tasks. Um, and when combined together, um, I seem almost insurmountable. Um, so we are we're currently focusing on um, improving discoverability and harvesting of IIIF resources. Uh, by organizations with an interest in understanding of IIIF. So to share it, so basically sharing um, resources amongst uh, triple I, folks that use uh, IIIF at their organizations. 
So uh, from, from a research perspective, um, OCLC Research, uh, myself and a few other colleagues um, are planning to continue this cross-divisional collaboration um, that Shay mentioned earlier to, to prototype and test advances in IIIF integration and support. Um, specifically, we are, we're going to commit to uh, working with and prototyping the change discovery API uh, that I mentioned on the previous slide. Um, and once you have a, a discovery API set up, um, you can start doing really interesting things, aggregation, um, metadata normalization enhancement, um, and then also beginning to build um, prototype discovery interfaces on top of all this data that you're aggregating through or from uh, various change discovery APIs. And um, I don't know if folks are familiar with John Zimmer. He uh, was one of the co-founders of Lyft, um, the, the ride sharing company. And he had this very interesting quote um, about his company um, that was, uh, if we started over today, uh, what would we do? And that's really the approach I like to take with this IIIF work because we obviously have our, our content DM service. Um, it's been around for, for quite a while now. Um, and not to say that it's, uh, that it's um, you know, aging ungracefully or anything like that but you know things change time you new know, time passes new technologies become available um the, the web has obviously changed radically from when uh, content dm was originally created so what the approach i have with this triple if work is you know if we could just sort of push aside or sort of ignore everything that is content dm now and had to and had the ability to build it from the ground up brand new today what would we do? And within the, within that context, IIIF is, is very important and is obviously the, the focus of all of this um, sort of digital material research work um, that I have been working on and with others will be working on um, in, in the coming year or so. So to talk more specifically briefly about um, what we will be doing, um, uh, I wanted to sort of break this into um, problem statements um, that we'd like to try to tackle over the coming year. And the first problem is um, how do we share IIIF material? Content DM, uh, as we mentioned, has 30 million images. Um, you know, other organizations have um, large amounts of images as well. How do we share this stuff and, and make it usable and interoperable? Um, and as I alluded to earlier, um, the, the, the way to do that is through the, um, the change discovery API. Um, and what this is, without going into a lot of detail, is um, a crawlable list of IIIF materials that have been uh, created, uh, updated, or deleted. Um, and the way this, um, this API works is similar to the way that um, sitemaps or OAI PMH um, or, or resource sync work, if those are technologies that uh, you happen to be familiar with. Um, so right now, currently, we have a, an experimental service, that uh, discovery service that includes that 14.4, 14.5 million uh, content DM uh, IIIF uh, resources. Um, the, the, this URL for that is there. Um, I will warn you, um, this, this API is meant for machines to consume. Um, it's not user-friendly. Uh, and to, to hammer that home, um, here's some JSON uh, data. This is what you will get if you go to that URL. Um, so it's not a user interface type thing. This is meant for um, a, a program to crawl and harvest and then produce um, data that can be indexed and then searchable in a much more uh, user-friendly web application. So, you know, once once we have this sort of discovery issue tackled, um, then the next question is: so, how do we harvest and actually use all of this data that that weird-looking JSON API can deliver um, can deliver to us? Um, so, to tackle this. Um, uh, for a meeting that we had at, at Stanford back in May, um, a colleague, Bruce Washburn, and I uh, harvested some IIIF content from uh, ContentDM, uh, Digirati, which is a, um, an organ or 
uh, an organization in the UK uh, that works with various libraries around the world, um, NCSU, um, as well as Stanford. Um, we harvested somewhere in the realm of a million or so IIIF materials. Um, we indexed all the metadata that we found in these IIIF materials, and we built a, a relatively simple but very interesting, um, as it came to be uh, discovered, uh, search interface on top of it. Um, that is the, the current uh, URL for that search interface. Um, I, I want to again warn you that um, that will, that URL will probably be changing. Um, so uh, in the coming months, it probably will not work or will redirect somewhere else. Um, but if folks are interested, I can certainly share with uh, Marilee and Shayla the, the updated URL, and she can send it out to um, the RLP uh, for for your use. So um, what, what does this registry look like? Um, it, it looks uh, looks like a search and discovery interface. Um, it might look very similar to uh, Europeana um, because we unabashedly uh, stole many of their user interface searching discovery um, features um, or, or at least layout. So this is uh, just an, a, an example search for uh, Martin Luther King. And what is, um, I think, unique and powerful um, and certainly unique for Content DM is um, you can immediately see results from uh, Stanford libraries, um, a Content DM user, um, the Ohio Memory Project, um, and then that third results is from NCSU. So this is sort of cross, um, not, not only cross collection, cross organization um, discovery of resources. And if you were to click on that image, it would bring up that image in a one of these IIIF viewers that Shane mentioned earlier. Um, this is uh, not Mirador. This is a different IIIF viewer called uh, the Universal Viewer um, that is geared a little bit more towards looking at individual images um, as opposed to Mirador, which is really designed for um, collaborative sort of research comparison of, of multiple images um, at the same time. Um, one thing um, that we think would be very interesting, um, and we want to continue research on it, but um, thus far have not taken the idea very far, is um, being able to search across all of these millions and millions of images and actually create your own collection, your own user-created collection that can then be saved and exported as IIIF data. So um, you can see this little sort of add shopping cart uh, button uh, in, in the results. Um, what that does right now is basically just add an image um, to your personal collection. Um, and eventually, we'd like to be able to build in support for um, saving these images um, across sessions. And then more importantly, being to export the, the, the IIIF manifest information as a sort of user-created collection that could be shared with colleagues or um, could be used by a, a professor as a, a sort of a, a teaching resource, the same way that you create a reading list. Um, the professor could create a list of um, images or manuscripts that uh, he or she wants to use in, in a course. So um, the final question that we're looking to try to tackle is, uh, it, it's great that we can um, discover IIIF materials, we can harvest them and make them indexable. Um, but the, um, you know, this is a problem that we've been facing for years is how do we actually index coherently um, all this heterogeneous metadata that we're aggregating? Um, so even within Content DM, there are um, thousands of different metadata properties that are used. Um, so I, I just did some quick data analysis a few days ago, and across our 14 million uh, IIIF Content DM resources, there are somewhere in the ballpark of 11,000 unique metadata properties used um, across a wide variety of different metadata schemas. Some are homegrown metadata schemes. So um, while you can easily index all the text and just build a giant text index, um, it would be much more useful for in-depth discovery to be able to 
um, intelligently app we use, use metadata fields is something that's more common uh, subjects um, descriptions uh, people places organizations um, but <clears throat> when you have such heterogeneous metadata being able to map those schemas can be very difficult um, and on top of being able to um, map the, the, the vocabulary, uh, the, the sort of the metadata scheme, there's also all the different strings. Uh, so ContentVM has not only um, English metadata, but also uh, Spanish, uh, Japanese, uh, German. So how do we take the values of this metadata um, and map them to um, v off URIs or fast URIs that are um, sort of language agnostic? Um, so ultimately what we'd like to try to do is produce a normalized um, and enhanced, and when I say enhanced, I mean um, reconciling strings to identifiers uh, index for all of this IIIF material that we're beginning to harvest. Um, and also, um, you know, as we're producing these um, normalized mappings, is be able to provide these metadata mappings back to the users. Um, for use in external external systems. Um, so um, this is work that um, we, we have not started yet, um, but are hopefully going to be diving into in the coming months. Um, there is a annual IIIF conference um, coming up in June in Germany. Um, and hopefully we will have some uh, updates on these sort of three research problems that we can share with uh, the participants of the conference there. So uh, with that, um, I will wrap things up and um, ask Shane to unmute himself just in case we have any questions from folks. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Uh, so one of the reasons, just for folks in the audience, one of the reasons that um, uh, Chela and I were eager to uh, invite Jeff and Shane to talk about their work with IIIF is that this really is an exciting um, partnership between uh, research and product and um, even for those of us who haven't been directly involved in the work, it has been uh, really exciting to watch from the sidelines. Um, so waiting for questions here, we have, um, we had a question from our colleague Karen Smith Yoshimura who asked, I think right before um, uh, Jeff uh, addressed this, will you be including identifiers as part of the content DM output for names like Martin Luther King Jr.? And I think you were talking about uh, normalizing just right after she entered that question, uh, right, uh, talking about normalizing the data and you would be uh, then um, converting strings to identifiers where you can. Yes, that is correct, yeah. Okay. Um, other questions waiting up. Uh, we have 15 minutes. Um, this is your opportunity to ask the experts. Uh, be sure when you're typing that uh, things go to all participants. For some reason that I don't understand, uh, WebEx has this option that is all attendees, and that goes to everybody but the panelists. Um, so if you have a question in and we're not answering it, it could be that you put it to all panelists, or to, um, what is it, all attendees. So be sure if you're typing um, that the option is set to all participants. Um, other things that you, you wish you had uh, had more time to expand on um, that you'd like to add a little more detail, either Jeff or Shane? Um, this is uh, this is Jeff. Um, I think uh, one thing we we talked about uh, throughout the presentation were these uh, these IIIF annotations. Um, and, and Shane and I both had the opportunity last week to attend um, a IIIF working technical working meeting, and um, annotations were top on the list of things that people were talking about there. There were uh, multiple presentations on. Um, using annotations, both um, sort of crowdsourced annotations uh, as well as more um, expertly curated annotations.
for um, a, a wide variety of um, uh, use, use cases, whether it be just general searching, um, actually scholarly research on, on topics and things like that. Um, and also, again, uh, pulling together aggregations of, of materials across, across collections and across organizations. So um, um, top of list for us or top of mind for us in terms of <clears throat> working on um, this cross divisional collaboration is um, trying to figure out a way to integrate annotations into content DMs, uh, triple IF support, which is uh, not, not trivial based on the way um, um, content DMs, triple IF uh, integration designed. So I think this, that will be a really great opportunity for um, Shane and us, as well as the um, uh, product um, technology staff working on content DM to work very closely together um, over the next year or so. Uh, so Jeff, um, let me just ask a follow-up question to be sure that I'm understanding about annotations. Could annotations be used for uh, transcriptions of documents? Because I know that that's something that's very popular uh, with lots of institutions offering up transcription services so that people can uh, crowdsource transcriptions of handwritten documents, for example. Yep, that, that, that's exactly it. And that's actually exactly what that um, Alabama State Archives, uh, that Shane, the project that Shane talked about earlier, uh, was was doing was taking uh, sort of handwritten um, World War One service cards and making the, the handwriting a machine, machine searchable and indexable by typing out um, the, uh, the the card text. Yeah, that's very exciting. I know that about maybe a year, a year and a half ago, we did a webinar on um, transcription services. And uh, it was quite a popular webinar. Lots of people are interested in um, the ability to do that. So I'm looking at the chat, and I'm unfortunately not seeing any questions from our participants today. Um, so uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Um, I want to thank you, Shane and Jeff, so much for your uh, contributions today. This was a lot of really great work. Maybe after you've addressed your uh, three research questions, we can invite you back to talk about um, what you found. Uh, that would be a, a good way to follow up on this work, I think. Um, so in any case, I want to thank you. I want to thank our attendees today for, uh, for coming in and spending your time with us. This webinar has been recorded, and we will share that out uh, right after, um, right as soon as it's posted to our website. So you'll be hearing back from us uh, within a week. So thank you very much, and this concludes today's webinar. <laughs>